Welcome. You're watching Locksmithing Innovations. Uh, this is a series of videos uh, being made to uh, help inspire and uh, create uh, uh, useful tools, tricks, and tips for locksmiths of all ages, all experience and genders, and uh, also anybody else who's working in a related field. Um, over the years I've uh, worked with and developed uh, tooling and that to make the job uh, more efficient, more accurate and stuff like that and this is a lot of what I'll be featuring or tools that I use. Um, so anybody that has subscribed, commented, liked or disliked uh, welcome back. Anybody that's new to watching the videos of locksmithing innovations, uh, thank you. Um, this is about a series of tools that I made and I showed two videos ago. Asked for comments of people who thought what they were. Well, a uh, little brief history on these tools. These tools were made due to the fact that... Um, an employer I worked for uh, had to change out and upgrade the locks on some fine wood cabinets at a yacht club, over a hundred I believe, 125 or so. Uh, the back set was going to remain the same. The holes just had to be accurately done to a larger size to accommodate the new locks. So the employer asked me what I could come up with. Uh, one of the other Technicians wanted to have a clamp-on jig. I was very concerned with a clamp-on jig uh, scratching the surfaces or slipping out of place and misaligning and that. So what I did is I came up with hole saw mandrels. Okay, you take your standard quarter-inch pilot bit out and you fit the correct mandrel. I actually made a complete series of them. Uh, now I've already drilled a couple earlier uh, leading up to filming this is the 5 16 I'll show you that hole in a second and this is the next size up which is the 3 8 so right now in the man in the hole saw I have a half inch I also use Lennox quick to eject to clear the wood bits when I'm doing cabinets filing cabinets other wooden cabinets drawers and that so I can clear the wood and the debris if it starts to pack up if I'm doing many so let's go ahead and get the half inch Now, like in every application, as you see there, I've got some wood in there, but it won't stop. It's only if I was doing many. Uh, like in all our applications, you never go completely through, even when you're installing a deadbolt or new hardware on a wood door. Or viewer, whatever. You go halfway in, and then you switch around. When you feel your pilot bit, quarter-inch pilot bit, come through, when you feel it just to start to come through, then you change all the And there you go there. So. Now, the one thing with the half inch is you cannot take the hole saw off because it's too thick to get through the original hole. The other sizes, the hole saw will come right off. I have to actually take the mandrel out of the hole saw arbor to get the, and change out the bed. And that's easily done. Just an Allen key in there. Boom. And now that should come out. There you go. And we can actually up it to the 716 or 
Now see the 7 16 in the size below will come right off. The whole saw will come right off. So I can bury that in there. So the job went really well. Accomplished without no problems. And I made a set for my employer on their metal lathe and a set for myself. And these are just standard bolts with the heads cut off of them long enough that I can have a shank the right diameter. Now, if I was doing the next one, I would And if I take a piece of brace of cloth, this happens to be emery cloth, but emery or sandpaper, take the burrs off of it. Now, as you can see, now this will take a nice three quarter inch cabinet lock. There you go there. Okay. So if I was doing the next size, obviously I did 5 16 before on uh, on another shoot, 3 8 and now 7 16 fits right in there, you see, and this was the half inch that I just completed. Okay, so that's what that tool was, was a whole saw mandrel system. And this is crumbling, but there you go there. Now, this leads me to one other thing. In locksmithing, we regularly have to upgrade hardware on doors, deadbolts and other hardware. Uh, used to be our locks were inch and a half diameter deadbolts we would install. Now, a lot of the hardware has gone to a two and an eighth inch footprint. So, there you go there, there's an arbor that goes down in there, okay, will allow you to upsize a hole. Okay, Starrett calls it a hole enlargement arbor. A company called Lee Valley calls it an oops arbor. There's one problem with this system, and the system is, or the problem exists, is if your original inch and a half hole was not done proper and accurately to the back set of the door it makes it extremely difficult when you use this system here because you're now creating a two and an eighth inch hole that's inaccurate just like your inch and a half was inaccurate and some models of locks accuracy is super important came across this when I was working in a large city in Canada and we were upgrading the contractor's hardware from the two high security multi-lock Herc deadbolts on homes. And the trouble was, is when we were upgrading it, we'd pull off the contractor's deadbolt or hardware and find these holes so bad and out of uh, spec that we had a super difficult time putting on the Herc deadbolts. Uh, a lot of work. So I come up with a system, okay, that cured this situation. And I actually made prototype, worked well. Uh, what happened was, is I took the system to Lockmasters while I was going on course there, showed it to Clayton Miller and Mark Miller, and uh, Asked them if they were interested in manufacturing the tool. Um, and never heard from them for about six to eight months. And I called them up and found out they weren't interested in manufacturing it. This was about 30 years ago or more. And basically, I uh, actually uh, went on to do other things in my career and not as much installation work, uh, working for some manufacturers and that and what happened was is when I got back into general locksmithing I needed that tool again uh, and I found out that uh, major probably had started making and marketing it approximately probably five years or so after I showed it to 
lock masters uh, and they're a pretty innovative company so you know they come up with stuff all the time so basically it's this system here and what it is it's like a deadbolt you screw it in you have to mortise your door and then you have a two and three eighths back set and two and three quarter back set okay now and obviously you go halfway through the door then you go in and you go the other half whether it's two and three eighths now a couple times my uh, hole saw got a little bit aggressive and jumped in uh, when there was a void and I've done a couple scratches but no problem um, works great and and you are now drilling and oversized upsizing your hole to the proper spec uh, basically uh, two of the technicians that I currently work with uh, liked the system so much they went out and bought themselves one and young Dan who I've already mentioned in other videos was using his and what happened was is this guide pin here welded into the hole and that and I have to say major on the instructions warrant you of this use only a slow speed when drilling using a fast speed may cause the drill blank to weld itself to the drill guide what I found is the lubrication whether it's tri-flow whether it's uh, uh, any any of the other great uh, lubricants lubricate it stops the heat buildup stops the welding um, because sometimes you're not going to go super slow on your speed but the slower the better keeps this from heating up and welding into this this happened to young Dan uh, on his first attempt out uh, maybe he didn't read the instructions maybe he did uh, he's an apprentice a very good apprentice and that so I gave him mine out of my new one the reason why I bought a new one is I am intending on using this to develop even a different model a newer model that another technician once asked me if I could come up with so once it's developed and tested if it's working I will feature it on a video uh, what I do want to tell you though is something when I developed my original I used and that's you see how this goes right through it this is an old hole saw arbor these are as good as gold they don't make them like this anymore if you get one that has a hole right through it grab it up if you can find them and not because they're good as gold to do different things with so I have a couple of these a few of these in my collection that goes right through when I originally developed mine one of my roommates was a tool and die maker for large automotive manufacturing and these are presses ejector pins they eject the molds after huge 300 ton presses press parts and molds in the automotive manufacturing industry and after a while they come out of tolerance so they just use them I believe these are chromolic because they don't heat up they don't have the same problem now I have made guide pins out of drill rods still heat up still got to make sure you lubricate them and you can see on this one here I've actually ground spots for my little Allen key set screws on the hole saw arbor or the the common screw there that holds them in so that it just holds the rod from spinning itself but if you can get a hold of some and you know somebody you can get a hold of some ejector pins punch press ejector pins as I say I believe the crow molly or something because they don't seem to heat up and weld into these things and they just go nice and smoothly in okay so now I will show you the uh, Starrett out of the Starrett catalog this morning they call it a hole enlargement arbor and there's a picture of it there that's this with a hole saw screwed on if you look down there you can see that there's threads down there two different sizes of threads just like in this picture here 
okay but as I say if you use that system you have to make sure your initial hole is accurate or else you'll make another inaccurate hole now another thing I found and I will be trying to get a hold of these is actually Starrett makes in their quick change arbor they make a hole enlargement arbor system I'm going to definitely try to get a hold of that and see how well that works as opposed to my style of arbors that I made okay so uh, just a final bit of information I'd like to share with anybody who views this in time um, a few weeks ago I had shown you a manual for my new X-Horse tablet uh, that I got in which I had pre-ordered back in December of 2020 um, and I told you I wouldn't be doing an unboxing because there's plenty of people that do that and this channel is more about as I say tools tips and tricks that will help people do the various jobs whether they're a locksmith carpenter cabinet maker or whatnot doing locks on cabinets or whatnot and want to upgrade and upgrade their whole size so they take a different a newer more modern lock or something um, basically um, that x-horse tablet there's a free webinar this Thursday coming up on the 11th of March being uh, put on that you just have to register for uh, with International Key Supply. Um, so anybody who is interested in knowing more about the X-Horse uh, tablet for automotive key programming or is thinking of buying one or has bought one, uh, I highly recommend uh, signing up for the uh, free webinar from uh, International Key Supply uh, on the new X-Horse tablet and its features. Hope you guys all have a great uh, great day today. I uh, hope everybody's staying safe and once again uh, I would really love to see some comments, likes, dislikes. Thank you for anybody that subscribed and is watching these videos. And if you also let me know anything more you want to know or ask questions in the videos of uh, other things that you've come across that you might need help on, I might have already, or one of the other viewers might have already uh, solved the issues. Everyone take care of themselves. Thank you very much.